So that was really the main result of Heath, Gerald, and Morton. They said that in order not to have arbitrage, they, f they computed what alpha has to be. And the way they computed that, they put the drift of the bond price using Ito's rule. They put it equal to R, P, D, T. So once you discount, it disappears. It becomes zero, and you have a martingale. Okay? And uh, I'm not going to do it. It's done in, in, uh, in my book and in other uh, material that you can uh, find yourself. Uh, but if you do it, you can compute that for the bond price to have this drift under the pricing probability, it has to be that alpha has to be equal to sigma times integral of sigma, where the integral is over maturities. Again, I have sigma transpose in case sigma is a vector, in, the, in which case this is the inner product of vectors. Okay, so alpha, we don't have a freedom to choose alpha. Once we've chosen sigma, alpha has to be like this. has to be sigma times integral of sigma. Okay, that's, that was the main result the, uh, of Heath, Gerard, and Morton. Uh, the main idea was to model the forward rates, continuously instantaneous forward rates, uh, and also to, and, and then the result was that the drift has to be like this. All right? So in practice, what do you do? You choose sigma for your forward rates, the volatility of the forward rates. And then we will have to calibrate to the today's bond prices. And uh, for that, we will use the fact that the today's forward rates are given by this formula from the today's bond prices. Uh, zero means today. Okay. All right, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the essence of the heath gerald Morton model, modeling forward rates. Uh, and uh, let's see an example. What is the simplest possible example? The simplest possible example is, uh, in which is the example in which the volatility of the forward rates is simply constant. Okay? Forward rates for all times and all maturities have constant volatility sigma. Let's see what happens in that case. So in we know from the previous formula, this one here, we know that uh, alpha has to be equal to sigma times integral of sigma. Now, integral of this constant is just going to be constant times capital T minus small t. So we get sigma squared capital T minus small t Okay, when you integrate just the constant. So there is our alpha, which means that df, the dynamics of the forward rates, are alpha, which is sigma squared t minus t dt, plus constant sigma dw of t. Okay? Now I'm going to integrate this uh, to because I will need it next. So I will integrate this, and I will have, when I integrate, f of small t capital T is f of 0 capital T, just the initial condition, plus integral of this. Okay, uh, t, d, t integral. This is easy to integrate. If you integrate, the first term is constant, so I get just times t. Integral of this is t squared over 2, so I get minus sigma squared t, t over 2. Okay, this is just simple standard calculus, uh, uh, standard integral. And then if I integrate sigma dw, I'm just going to get sigma w. All right. What, I, what I'm trying to see here is what this model corresponds to in terms of the short rate. And my short rate, I told you uh, a couple of slides ago that it is equal to f of t, t, when you put lowercase t in both arguments. All right, uh, let's see what it is. So instead of capital T here, I will put small t. So I get f0 small t plus sigma squared here t small t minus t over 2 is t over 2 times this t is going to be t squared over 2. And then plus sigma w over t. Okay, so this is my short rate in the heath gero morton model in which the volatility of the forward rates is uh, constant. Well, let's see what happens if I write it in the differential form. I look at the dynamics dr of t, 
that means I have to differentiate this and when small t changes, but small t here is in the second argument, uh, it uh, actually plays the role of maturity here. Uh, and therefore, I'm going to write that derivative, and I differentiate this, I'm going to write that the derivative as a derivative with respect to the second argument, which I call capital T. Okay? But, but then once you compute that derivative, you, you plug in for your variable small t. Right? So this is, this is just notation. Uh, we, could, we could write it differently. Uh, right, I could write this as partial, partial, capital T, meaning se second derivative with respect to the second argument of 0. I put here capital T, and then evaluate at t equal to small t, okay, which just means plug in here instead of capital T, small t. Maybe you are familiar with this notation. Uh, maybe not. Uh, but, but OK, the idea is I just differentiate this with respect to the second argument derivative with respect to the second argument, and then I plug in for that second argument, small t. That's the notation. Derivative of this is sigma squared t, okay. and then times dt. Okay. Th those were deterministic parts. I just take derivatives. And then here, it's just going to be plus sigma dw of t. So that's the model for the short rate that corresponds to the constant volatility of the forward rates. Do we recognize this model? Well, I don't know if you remember, but this is actually what we call the Holy model. If you remember, I'll just write it there. Uh, the Holy model was the R of t was b of t dt plus sigma dw of t. Yeah, the Holy model was constant volatility of the short rate, which is actually equal to the volatility of the forward rates, plus some deterministic function b of t dt. And uh, what so that that this is this deterministic function. So this th thing here is a deterministic function of t, and uh, it plays the role of this b of t in the Holy model. But the advantage here is, in the Holy model, in advance, we don't know what B of t has to be to when you calibrate it to the bond price data. Okay? This is why, if you remember, this is why Holy introduced a model like this, to, to be able to calibrate uh, perfectly today's uh, bond, price, uh, bond prices, theoretical bond prices, to the observed bond prices. And so perfectly uh, fit to the today's yield curve because you have infinitely many parameters, and with infinitely many bonds, uh, you can f do the fit. But we didn't know there what B of T has to be. It could be computed, but it wouldn't be uh, very easy. Here, using the heath jero morton approach, we get exactly what B of T has to look like in terms of the data that you see. Okay. It has to be this. It has to be the derivative of the observed current forward rate, uh, rates uh, plus sigma squared t. That's what B of t has to be. And then, your, uh, if you choose it like this, at time 0, your model will be perfectly calibrated to the bond data. Actually, for any sigma, you still have the flexibility to choose sigma. Okay? So at least at time 0, your model will be perfectly cali calibrated if you use this as your drift. Okay, so that's the advantage of Hijer Morton. It's naturally geared towards being calibrated to, to the bond price data through the forward rates, which, you know, whether observing forward rates or observing the yield, smoothed out yield curve is equivalent, which is very nice in theory. Uh, however, in practice, uh, it's not so easy. If you if you take a look here, I'm taking a derivative of this function f, and then function f itself. If we go back, func function f itself is a derivative. Right? So so we are we to implement this in practice, we will have 
to compute a derivative with respect to maturity of log of bond prices. And bond prices we only observe discreetly, right? So you, are, uh, you have to compute a derivative of a function that you only observe discreetly. And if you want that short rate thing, then you actually need to compute the second derivative. Now, this numerically may be, or typically is, very unstable, right? So, uh, okay, the function you, you make, you know, if, if, you, if you smooth in a slightly different function, this one or some other function, the derivative can change quite a bit. The mathematical derivative can change depending on how you smooth out your, your discreetly observed points. Uh, so you may get very different results depending on your method of smoothing out the discrete data that you observe. So it's tricky, it becomes uh, tricky in implementation. We could talk about it, uh, we could have a course on that, uh, but that's not what this course is about. It's about the main principles uh, and the implementation we leave for uh, your next uh, course uh, or uh, your own reading. Uh, but it may be it may be tricky to do it well in practice. All right, so that was the that was the slides on the uh, heat zero of Morton, uh, so modeling forward rates, uh, which is in a sense more natural than mo uh, modeling the short rate, more flexible, but it can also be harder. Uh, short rate models are sp really special cases of this, uh, but uh, they are kind of easier to do deal with. They are one factor models and they are Markovian models. Um, these uh, forward rate Heath, Jerome Morton models don't even have to be Markovian, so there are difficulties also numerically computing the prices.